rhino population. But elephant and rhino poaching has reached crisis uh, proportions in southern Africa over the last five years. Uh, last month, the Minister of Environmental Affairs, Edna Malewa, announced that for the first time in a decade, rhino poaching statistics have stabilised despite 1,175 animals being killed in the country in the year. But to deal with this crisis, John Hume, owner of the largest private rhino farm in the world, is fighting for the legalisation of global rhino horn trade and believes that this is the only way to protect the species in the long run. Now, John Hume is with us in studio this morning. Uh, thank you for coming in, Mr. Hume. Very nice of you to join us here today. No problem. Let's start at the beginning. In, nine, in 2008, you decided to start your own rhino farm. Uh, was this purely a, a business, uh, business decision at the time, or, or did you think this to be part of a long-term solution in, in solving the, the crisis with, uh, with poaching a rhino horn? It actually started before that. I bought a farm to retire on in 1992 and uh, I met rhinos for the first time shortly after that. During the 90s I became aware of first of all what wonderful animals they were and secondly the persecution they were going through in Africa and uh, they literally climbed the top of my hit parade and uh, I became more and more aware that if we didn't do something about it we would lose them. I was uh, um, outdone by the poachers on that uh, breeding station in the east, and that is where, in 2008, I started the current uh, captive breeding operation where I am now. That's the one you have just alluded mm. to. And it's simple. I just believe that if we're going to save them from extinction, we must breed them and we must protect them. You're quite passionate about the legalizing this trade. Is it the answer, and why do you say so? Well, I believe the answer is what I'm doing, captive breeding operations. It's not what a lot of people think is very small, confined spaces. They are quite big spaces, but obviously not extensive mm. like our game reserves. So that makes it easier to protect them. I believe one of the ways to protect them is to take off their horns and make it less attractive to the poacher. In other words, the poacher is still going to uh, go through the same amount of work, the same amount of risk, but get about one-third of the return. Having taken off the horns to mm -hmm. protect the rhino, I think it is silly not to sell the horn in order to continue getting your finances which you need to protect rhino. Currently, my protection costs exceed all the other costs put together. That's all the feed for the rhinos, all the veterinarian management. So you have a private army pretty much that, that you have to employ in order to protect the rhinos that you farm? Private army, a uh, permanent helicopter, uh, going now for uh, more high-tech stuff, early warning systems, radar... Uh, long distance cameras, etc. Very expensive. Do you think it's possible to control the price uh, and the sales of the horn? And, and, and who, uh, who, who would you be trading with in this space, do you think? I believe that we should trade with the people who are now trading with the people who are killing our rhino horns. Uh, our rhino, sorry. Mm. I believe that if we went to those people and said to them, you are killing your own business because in five years' time, there are going to be no more rhinos for you to kill. So why not rather come and buy a legal, sustainable source, and then you will have a continuation of your business forever? I think those people who we call all sorts of bad names would be more inclined to listen to us th than what we are currently doing is say to them, go away, we will never sell you a single rhino. Mm. So they are going away. They're going to the people who are killing our rhinos. And the, 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 it is not the demand that is uh, uh, killing our rhino. It's the way in which that demand mm. is supplied. That demand is being supplied from dead rhinos. And we are suggesting that it is rather supplied from live rhinos and uh, natural mortalities. The reality is that a rhino can regrow its horn 
uh, 15 times, up to 15 times in a, in a lifetime? About time. that. It grows about 10 centimeters a year. It also rubs it away naturally on trees and stones and things. So that's why it gets to a point. But if you took my rhinos and we got rid of the poaching and you let the horn grow for three or four years, mm. you would not even know that that rhino had been dehorned because it'll sharpen its horn and it'll look like a normal rhino that had not been dehorned. So I believe that at any time when we have finally got rid of all poaching, mm. my rhinos will be perfect to stock the rest of Africa. What do you think right now are some of the biggest misconceptions with regards to rhino farming and then the trade in rhino horn? I, I marvel at the possibility of that misconception. I'm completely convinced that what we've got to do is breed rhinos and protect them. Now, what can be wrong with that? Nothing. So protection, protecting them, one of the ways is to remove the rhino horn. So now why don't we sell that product which is sustainable mm. and renewable and try and talk them out of killing rhinos to supply horns? We have here, yeah, a lot of people say, how are you going to keep the illegal horn out of the, the legal? Uh, we have what we call a RODIS uh, identification system here. So it's very easy for us to make sure that anybody who wants to sell a horn, make sure it's legal. In conclusion, where do you see this crisis with poaching? Uh, it seems to be extending to other species. Now, where do you see the, the poaching crisis going in the next five years? And, and do you see this decrease that we're seeing, this slight decrease in rhino being poached in the last year? Do you see that uh, being extended or, or, or getting, getting bigger? I am very fearful. I am very fearful uh, because the, the decrease was very minimal. Is part of it because we have actually got less rhinos to poach. Uh, it is, I fear for the rhino into the future. And we are not doing what we should do to let private, uh, se the private sector and the communities, both of them are capable of breeding a large amount of rhino. And we are doing nothing to help the communities and we are doing nothing to help the commercial sector. In fact, we make it very unattractive for them to breed rhino because you have to lose a lot of money breeding rhinos without selling the rhino horn. Mr. Yuma, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, John Hume is the biggest rhino, farm, uh, rhino farmer, not just in South Africa, but in the world today.